During the height of the black arts movement in Chicago, a group of artists on the South Side came together to create a platform for black artists to showcase their work to a mass audience, a response to the adversity they faced in having their work shown in galleries and major institutions. In 1970, black aesthetics was conceived. Douglas R. Williams, Bobby Sinstack, and Earl Calloway were instrumental in partnering with the Museum of Science and Industry and in organizing a grand tribute to the culture, heritage, and contributions of African Americans in the arts. Museum of Science and Industry dug in the archives, way in the back. We went back up in that art, in that uh, establishment, found some space, and put together enough on the first floor. They had an auditorium back there, an elevator. It had everything. We hung the show in there. When we come out of there, you couldn't tell who had been there or what, because we had no holes in the wall. In other words, I made sure I supervised, and, and, and actually not just supervised, I, I hung everything to make sure that we come in and come out clean. Uh, Earl Calloway, he, he was the fine art editor for the Defender. He did all of the publicity. He did the stage production, what was called the performing arts. The dancing, the singing, the Darlene Blackburn dancers, the Mahalia Jackson singing, the great guy that wrote Precious Lord, Thomas A. Dorsett, bless his heart, he was there with us in the beginning. We had a show of shows. So Black Creativity is a tremendous program of the museum that has been here uh, now for 50 years. It is an exciting opportunity that connects um, our Chicago community of artists um, and uh, scientists and innovators to highlight the myriad contributions of African Americans, not only in Chicago, but across this country um, for the last 50 years. And so it's an exciting opportunity to feature fine art and to connect it with innovation and creativity from uh, across the United States. The Black Creativity Program really is about inspiring kids to see themselves in the STEM professions. Well, you know, Black Creativity began when artists in the, in the community couldn't find places to show their art 50 years ago. And the museum was that place and we, we opened its arms and, and it has grown and grown every year. Just a couple of years ago, we started adding youth programs to it, uh, to uh, the submissions. Youth started presenting their works in the show. And uh, they've been terrific. And you know, every year we go to the show and we say, you know, it's better this year than it was last year. Every year we say it's better than it was last year. It just keeps on getting better. And just recently, again, about two or three years ago, we partnered with the Art Institute of Chicago, the School of the Art Institute, and they are participants in, and, and partners in this show. And it just is to, a great outlet for people's creativity. It gets better every year, and uh, now our youth are also a key part of it. Black creativity is the catalyst for so much social justice art in our world. African American artists' ideas, creativity, sheer forces of will reflect society back on itself, fights oppression and injustice, and makes the world a better place. As a premier school of art in the United States, we share a mission with the Black Creativity Juried Art Exhibition in that we both celebrate, support, and cultivate extraordinary artists and designers. There's another reason, however, and that is because artists have always had the ability to make the world a better place. We call this being a citizen artist. Black Creativity is one of several programs that have existed that really have helped um, provide platforms for primarily initially exposure. So pre-internet, uh, pre the ability for the world to be so globally connected, black people in particular had limited means of exposure. And so creativity, the arts have always been a format. The South Side has always been a place for those types of interactions from the Southside Community Arts Center to 
to other esteemed institutions that have supported us. So Black Creativity for me just becomes one more of those, those programs and those platforms. Um, there have been others that have come after it that now also serve that role, but in large part, it was critical not only for youth and for exposure, but also for artists that were emerging. That was a very important part of my trajectory to be able to exhibit at Black Creativity, to get visibility, to get support. So it's not just the youth, although that is an important component, but it actually also is very influential and um, really important for artists at every level of their development. Uh, now we talk about STEAM and before that STEM, but at the time it was just a space of opportunity. So I don't think the founders were thinking about like the concrete tethers between arts and sciences uh, when they would think about that. They would think about a space of potential. There was a kind of an empty space. There was a question of like, can we access and make something available, test it out, see what happens, let it evolve, return to it, do it again, change it so it benefits the museum. So it, it really is in a lot of ways a really amazing kind of experiment. And uh, one of the things that I've uh, been amazed to see is kind of how the programming has evolved from uh, the black aesthetic, the black creativity, to thinking about ways of integrating the arts into science and how um, something that seemed disconnected maybe at the beginning, uh, you know, now it's kind of fused together. So yeah, I mean that benefits everyone and what's wonderful is that um, um, while you're going to a science museum you, you kind of run into all this kind of creativity. Um, that's nestled and it's very site specific. You know, black creativity on the south side of Chicago. Um, it, it, it's real important and it's poetic. And, um, you know, I always, I, I'm just so happy it's here and uh, here for the community.